Good evening, sports fans. This is Will McNeely with the Sports Utility Vehicle. We're bringing to you live from North Gwinnett High School in the fifth annual Jared Cook Classic. This is game two. This one features North Cobb Christian versus Collins Hill. The Eagles versus the Eagles. Cobb County Eagles versus Gwinnett County Eagles. Starting for uh, North Cobb is number zero, Kendall Crute. Number two, Hunter Ware. Number three, Keyshawn Butts. Number 15, Stephon Jelks. And probably number 44, yep, Trey Kalina. And now for Collins Hill. Number 11, Jalen Mitchell. A 6'4 junior. Number 20, Matt Bradley, the 5'10 junior, point guard. Number 22, Pierre Richardson, a 6'2 senior. Number 23, Devin Mitchell, a 6'4 senior. And number 34, Jeremy James, a 6'5 senior. Both teams feature uh, some D1 commits for North Cobb Christian. Uh, Kendall Crute, he had 27 points yesterday. And he is committed to Ohio University, the Bobcats, not to be confused with the Ohio State University Buckeyes. And at number 15, Stephon Jelks, he had 17 points yesterday. He was limited in action due to uh, some foul trouble. And he's committed to uh, the local school Mercer Bears down in Macon, Georgia. Uh, and then for Collins Hill, they feature uh, number 20, 23, Devin Mitchell. Uh, senior who is committed to Alabama Roll Tide. And speaking of Devin Mitchell, he's lining up against the taller Trey Kalina, and Trey Kalina easily gets that one with number two. Uh, Hunter Ware getting it and bringing it up, and a quick three-pointer is up and no good. And rebound Jeremy James. And I believe after watching uh, North Cobb Christian the past couple days uh, that they might be out-rebounded this game. As Trey Kalina, he's, he's a big boy, but he's – not really quick to get up there. As I speak of it, he's gets that rebound. But whenever he's contested when rebounding, he hasn't been able to get it. And Kendall Crute launches it and nails that one. He starts right off where he left yesterday uh, with three-pointer after three-pointer. He only had a couple two-point shots, but main, main, mainly coming from three-point land. And they're going to stick in a man-to-man -man zone. As Collins Hill lost to... They lost to Greater Atlanta Christian, but they gave their best effort. And Greater Atlanta Christian only won by uh, not as much as they probably would have liked to. As Collins, or yeah, Collins Hill, uh, they they fought back a little bit. They showed some gumption. They showed uh, they deserve to be in this tournament. Uh, Jalen Mitchell, number 11, is actually the younger brother of Devin Mitchell. And at times he showed uh, some promise yesterday. And Kendall Crute gets the steal. He's going to push that one up. Sees so uh, Jelks. Coming down court with them. He said, let me have it. Let it fly. But Kendall Crew lays it in to take a 5-0 run to start this game. Boy, what a pass. Matt Bradley, but uh, blocked by Kendall Crew. It was a great screen and roll between Matt Bradley and Jeremy James. Kendall Crew on fire. And that's going to cause Collins Hill to call a timeout. Oh, goodness. And Georgia Power should start charging Kendall Crute some sponsorship for how well he's been lighting it up uh, from three-point land the past two days. And he himself has taken this team. He has all eight points for Collins Hill, or, uh, North Cobb Christian. Cobb County Eagles are lighting it up early. Kendall Crute with a pair of threes, a steal, and takes it all the way with a layup to have an 8-0 lead. Forces Collins Hill coach to think things over with a 30 second timeout. And now, North Cobb Christian coming out with a full court press. A little known fact about North Cobb Christian is their head coach, Greg Mata, that name should sound a little familiar, is the head coach of, uh, he's the brother of head coach of Ohio State University, Thad Mata. 
So basketball runs deep in their bloods in the family. And Greg Mata helped start the basketball program at North Cobb Christian. And he left to be the assistant coach, I believe, at Kennesaw State, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And then he came back, said, I want to be, you know, help you guys out some more. And he took the reins back over for North Cobb Christian. Pass in there to Trey Kleena, up and good. Showing a little bit of flash there with the turnaround jumper. Got a foul on number three for North Cobb Christian, Keyshawn Butts. But uh, more importantly is Collins Hill star player Devin Mitchell is down. Looked like he came down on that, rolled it on Keyshawn's foot, if I'm not mistaken. And we'll have the trainers come out and take a look at him. I hope that young man's okay, because he was very impressive. He can shoot some three-pointers as well. And we'll take this opportunity to tell you that this is brought to you by the Sports Utility Vehicle. If you want your sports event broadcasted live over the Internet for the 7 billion people in the world to see, hit up suvehicle.com. Again, that's suvehicle.com. Uh, fill out our contact form, hit us up, and we'd love to talk to you about how we can bring your sports event live. We do any kind of sports event from the high school all the way up to professional level. And Deva Mitchell is now being helped over to the, um, the bench by the head coach, one of the players, and he is clearly frustrated. Checking in now for Collins Hill is number 12. J.D. Oza, Ozo, uh, and Devin Mitchell is clearly frustrated as he wishes he could be out there. Now North Cobb Christian back in action here. A bit of a full court press. As soon as it's inbounded, it's called off. Pick and pop action between uh, Jeremy James and number 22, and Matt Bradley gets the pass, driven around, swings it over to Pierre Richardson. Loses control of it from some good defensive effort by guess who? None other than Kendall Krupp. Stefan Jelks dishes it over in three-point land. And Dre Kalina, boy, something has happened between him yesterday and today. And I was talking to a couple of people how I haven't been truly impressed with him. He's just a big old boy wasting space the past couple days. But he's done all right today, you know. Turnaround jumper, had one pretty good rebound. And uh, that one he went up with it uh, semi-strong. And now the score is 12 to 4, North Cobb Christian. Three pointer good, no good by uh, Hunter Ware. And rebound by 23, Pierre. Rebound, Jeremy James. Blocked by Trey Kalina. I think he wants to get his stats up today. Bringing it up by. Passing to Trey Kalina from assist, but rebound by Stefan Jelks, and that's what he's known for is he'll stick his nose in there and definitely get some rebounds. I've seen him do that the past couple of days. He loves the rebound, but yesterday he was very limited in action due to foul trouble. Uh, he sat on the bench most of the day because he had four fouls. He never fouled out, but he definitely had four fouls with limited his action. Jalen Mitchell nails the three-pointer to get it to 12 to seven. Uh, Jalen Mitchell's the younger brother, Devin Mitchell. Trey Kalina doesn't get that one, gets a rebound though, and he grabs it, dribbles, looks like he almost traveled, goes up with it, rebound by none other than Stefan Jelks, but we got a whistle here. We'll wait for the call from Mr. Referee. We got a foul, looks like on number 11 for Collins Hill, uh, Jalen Mitchell. And it's not a shooting foul, so it's going to be uh, inbounds underneath. As Hunter Ware is going to try and get it out, gets it to Stefan Jelks. Passes it off to Keyshawn Butts. Back over to Hunter Ware. Sets up a play. Might have some screen and roll action between him and Trey Kalina. Trey's rolling, looking for it, but a dish off to three-point land is no good as Keyshawn Butts misses that one. Rebound is number 22, Pierre Richardson. Over to... Rebound 
Hunter Ware taking it all the way against Matt Bradley. Up and in. Count the basket. So Matt Bradley will pick up his first. Correction, his second. So Hunter Ware looking to complete the three-point play. And he does to push the lead to 15-7 to with 3.18 to go in the first quarter. This is the third and final day of the Jared Cook Classic, the fifth annual one. It's been a great event so far. Got two games left after this one. And bringing to you that action is, uh, oh, we got a moving screen. So the foul is called on number 10, Daniel Roach, as he came in. That's his first team third. And Kendall Krupp bringing it up. Stop on the play. We've got a foul. Oh, correction, we got a clock malfunction. Time was reset to 2.58. So North Cobb is forced to inbounds it from the side and gets it over to Hunter Ware. Hunter Ware over to Kendall Crute. Kendall Crute looking for Stefan Jelks, who's down below, posting up wide open. Stefan doing some work. Jumper from baseline. Good. It's Stefan Jelks, the future Mercer Bear, going down to Macon, staying local. And we got some great defensive pressure by Keyshawn Butts. Forces a turnover by Collins Hill. Coming in now is number 11, Jonathan Twine. He was very promising yesterday as well as he hit some good three-pointers and took it to the basket a couple times. But uh, I was more impressed with his uh, stepping in for Kendall Crute at times and knocking down the open three-pointer. Boy, as number two, Hunter Ware dives the basket wide open, sees the pass, is rightfully so, and nails it. Kiss off the glass, 19 to 7. And we got a travel call. Coming in now for Collins Hill is number five, Daniel Devin Watson. You listen to the Sports Utility Vehicle, Will McNeely bringing to you live the fifth annual Jared Cook Classic. Ooh, I thought he travel. I don't know about that one. He's, he almost pulled up with it, and I thought he lost control. The ref saying he had control of the ball, so that's uh, one step too many. Turns it over to Collins Hill. The Eagles versus Eagles, Cobb County versus Gwinnett County. Jalen Mitchell blocked by Stefan Jelks from three-point land, but Stefan is leaking out. He was wide open for a long time. They should have looked up. Uh, missed him on that one. Jonathan Twine into Trey Kalina. Trey Kalina up and good. He's been very impressive today. I think he's turned things around from yesterday. Pierre Richardson dumps it off. Travel again, one step too many. He picked up his pivot foot. He needs to establish position, which is now going to force, uh, after a couple of turnovers, it's going to force Collins Hill to call a timeout. I believe that's their second. And this one's a full timeout as they're going to talk things over. And I take this opportunity to let you know that this is brought to you by the Sports Utility Vehicle, this broadcast. Thank you for tuning in, fans, relatives, coaches, college coaches of your teams. If you want your sports events broadcasted live over the Internet for all 7 billion people in the world to watch, check out the suvehicle.com. Fill out our contact form. We'd love to talk to you and work with you of how we can bring to you the event of your dreams online. 
And it's one of the great things about the Internet is you can watch your games anywhere at any time around the world. Cell phones, tablets, computers, and TVs can now broadcast Internet. And we can bring that to you possible. We're back in action here as North Cobb Christian leads 21-7 uh, to 7 over Collins Hill. Eagles versus Eagles. Ken Lecrute's been very active, but uh, so is Trey Kalina. And that basket's good by number 11, Jalen Mitchell. The final minute coming down. But more importantly for Collins Hill is their star player, Devin Mitchell, the Alabama commit, earned, injured his ankle, I believe. Uh, and that three-pointer is good by Hunter Ware. Uh, Devin Mitchell injured, injured his foot as he brought it in and jumped up, and I believe he came down on someone's foot and rolled his ankle. What a move by Stefan Jelks. Uh, what is that? That's called a Euro, isn't it, almost, or just a jump? Jump stop cross the lane. Catches defender off guard. That one's good by Watson. Devin Watson, number five. It's now 26 to 11. Kendall Crute's going to launch that one confidently, but he misses it. But rebound is number 22, Pierre Richardson. As Collins Hill is down 26 to 11 to North Cobb Christian Eagles. Eagles versus Eagles, Gwinnett County, Cobb County, coming to you live from North Gwinnett High School. Is the sports utility vehicle bringing to you live the fifth annual uh, Jared Cook Classic. We'd like to thank you, Jared Cook, if you're paying attention, if you're watching this live. I'd like to give you a shout out. Uh, this is Will McNeely with the Sports Utility Vehicle. Again, if you want your sports event broadcasted live over the internet, visit the suvehicle.com. Again, that's suvehicle.com. Fill our contact form. We do special events helping you bring that live. Sponsorship development and web broadcasting of sports. And all the proceeds of the raffles and tickets have gone to cancer research as Jared's mother is a survivor of breast cancer. Incredible story there. And Jared Cook, former basketball football star here at North Gwinnett, went on to play football for University of South Carolina. Now plays in the NFL, the big leagues, for the St. Louis Rams. We're back in action here for Collins Hill and North Cobb Christian. And there, uh, North Cobb's coming out of this quarter with a man-to-man -man defense, putting some pressure. Stefan Jels guarding Jalen Mitchell. Almost got a screen in and roll, or a screen and pop, it looks like. Shot is no good. Last touch by Collins Hill, so it'll... North Cobb Christian will retain this possession. Stefan Jeltz looking for the wide open three. He had it for a second, but dishes down, down low to Jerry, uh, Trey Kalina. Uh, Trey Kalina travels, though, and Stefan was diving wide open to the basket. So uh, Collins Hill will get that one back. A little screen and roll between Pierre Richardson and, and Jeremy James. But Jeremy James unable to hold that one on. So North Cobb Christian gets it back. Jonathan Twine bringing it up for North Cobb Christian. Over to Stefan Jokes. Long three-pointer is good. He can shoot it. And he's good in some picking and popping. Pick and pop action there. Got a foul. It's on Stefan Jelks. That's his first and the team second, if you didn't hear that from the announcer. Coming in now for... North Cobb Christians, number three, Keyshawn Butts. Keyshawn 
Got a jump ball as Keyshawn Butts and Pierre Richardson are tying it up. And possession arrow is North Cobb, so the Eagles of Cobb County will take this one over now with 6.36 to go. They lead 29 to 11. They came out on fires. As Kendall Crute went on an 8 0 run by himself, hit a three pointer, then stole it, and then drove it all the way to kiss it off the glass, and then hit another three pointer. And then for the most part, they have kept their lead pretty sizable as Collins Hill star player Devin Mitchell is out right now with the ankle injury. And also impressive has been Trey Kalina today. So he's been active on the boards, had a block shot, and I think he's hit a two or three uh, baskets. Matt Badley tried to dish it off to Jeremy James, and Jeremy James lost it, but then in the uh, scuttle of things, Jeremy James gets it back and goes up and kisses it off the glass, nails it. 29 to 13. North Cobb Christian still leads. Kendall Crute working things on the outside. Over, reverses it, and reverses it again. Trey Kalina gets it down low, brings it low, too low though, and tries to dish it to uh, Stefan Jelks as he's diving on the baseline. Uh, one of the things that Trey Kalina definitely needs to work on though is uh, catching in the low post. He brings it down low, which gives an opportunity to on uh, a help side defender to slap it away. If he can just grab it, keep it chin to chest, he could be more effective in the post. Uh, you could do a lot more damage that way. It could work miracles with both passing and uh, post progression alone. Unable to retain that rebound, and, and he gets beat defensively. And I know Greg Mata is standing over there, stopping his feet, wishing more out of his man, and he's going back to the old days the old Trey Kalina we saw the past couple days. And I believe he's getting tired and probably needs a rest. He's begging for it down low. Brings it low again, but able to get the shot off. He misses it. Keyshawn Butts is beat on the rebound by Matt Bradley. So Matt Bradley's going to bring it up for uh, North, or excuse me, Collins Hill. Passes it over to Pierre Richardson, who's able, unable to hang on to it. So turnover. Coming in for Collins Hill is number 10, Daniel Roach, a 6'4 junior. And also coming in now is Hunter Ware for North Cobb Christian for Trey Kalina. I know he's going to have a chat with some of his coaches about uh, what he needs to correct. As North Cobb Christian still leads 29 to 15. But don't go away, don't touch that mouse, because bringing to you next is Mark Blumen with, don't touch that mouse, the SUV's in the house, the phrase that pays for him. As he brings to you live a couple of great games later, featuring Miller Grove in the third game, and then North Gwinnett, who's been uh, pretty impressive so far. They beat Effingham in the first game on Saturday, and they beat uh, Tucker yesterday two top-rated teams in their respective classifications. Stefan Jelks with a great move, misses, gets his rebound, tips it in. And they now lead 31 to 17. Speaking of Miller Grove, here they come. The five-time state champions are in the house now. Miller Grove's gonna take on Peachtree Ridge later, who feature Amir Warnock who's committed to Jackson University, Jacksonville University. And North Gwinnett will take on Hillcrest from the state of South Carolina, our, our wonderful uh, neighbors. That last buck was by Ware to push it to 33 to 17. Now in for uh, North or Collins Hill is number five, Daniel Watson. North Cobb Christian won yesterday. Peachtree 
Kendall crewed up and good. He said, Mr. Backboard, give me a little bit of help here and kisses it off and nails it. Switching, it looks like, on some screens or more or less kind of scuttle here. And why, but yep, they're going to get a traveling call as uh, I believe that's Hunter Ware. Unaware, got the rebound, but then fell down and rolled over. So that's going to draw a travel call from the referee. So North, or excuse me, Collins Hill keeps the ball on this possession. They're going to inbounds it from underneath. Three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Boy, what a take is Daniel Watson, but he's rejected as he has uh, moved slower than a snail on that play, which gives an opportunity to. Open it up for the rejection. Jonathan Twine launches it. He hit some yesterday, but misses that one. Rebound is tipped into Jalen Mitchell. He's going to bring it up. He can dribble. He has some handles. He showed it yesterday. He's not just a low post player. He showed flashes of athleticism, and he can handle the ball pretty well at times. He's the younger brother of Devin Mitchell, who's sitting on the bench still with an injury. Hunter Ware, three. And as I mentioned, Jalen Mitchell and his handles, he's able to just take it to the house. And that one's on Devin Watson, his first. That's the team fourth foul. With one minute, 11 seconds, one, one, one to go in the half of the second game of the fifth annual Jared Cook Classic with proceeds benefiting cancer research. Boy, what a move by Hunter Ware. He was diving, uh, cut it to the basket, and Stefan Jelks realized it, got him the ball, drew some contact, nailed the, the little jumper, and then Collins Hill travels. So North Cobb will get another shot with 46 seconds to go. I'm sure they're just going to try and get a quick shot here, see if they can keep getting another possession with less than a minute here. They're taking their time a little bit, though. And I know the Collins Hill people are wanting a five-second call as he held on to that thing until Christmas comes. Uh, but refs say no, and refs are going to talk to the coach, let him know he needs to calm down with his arguing. And up is fouls on number 12, J.D. Ozo. And that's his first, team fifth. Which will send... Uh, Keyshawn butts to the line as he was driving to the basket. So I'll send him to the line at two, nails the first, pushes it to 41 to 19, a solid 22 point lead going into half. But as our first game show, it is not over till the fat lady sings. And he nails the second one with a 23 point lead now. Uh, with less than 10 seconds to go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Four, Jalen Mitchell, three, two, uh, rebound. Er. And but as our first game showed, it is never over until the Fat Lady sings because Sequoia was down 20 plus and went on a 25 to five run to open the second half to go up by four. Lost by two though. Uh, they were up 44 to zero, but uh, the defending Class A private school state champs. Green Forest Christian went on a 6-0 run to end the game to win by two. So never fall asleep. But I'm sure Greg Model will have his team well prepared coming in the ha uh, second half. And that'll do it for the first half as we take a quick break. This is Will McNeely brought to you by the Sports Utility Vehicle. We'll take a quick break and I'll be right back.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Will McNeely with the Sports Utility Vehicle bringing to you live the second game before today at North Gwinnett High School for the fifth annual Jared Cook Classic. This individual matchup features the Collins Hill Eagles versus the North Cobb Christian Eagles, Gwinnett County versus Cobb County. As uh, the Cobb County Eagles have been pretty dominant so far, it's uh, been a real team effort as Kendall Crute, Stefan Jelks, Trey Kalina, Hunter Ware, and Keyshawn Butts have all been pretty active uh, in this game. Uh, Kendall Crute took the team on his back to start the game on an 8-0 run. And more importantly for Collins Hill is their star player, Devin Mitchell, is actually back on the court now to start this half. He went out for the most of the majority of the first half with a bit of an injury, but now he's on the court again. We'll see how that affects uh, Collins Hill and their ability to come back on a sizable 23-point lead. But as I mentioned earlier, do not fall asleep. Don't go to, uh, don't turn that dial. Don't switch it to a new browser tab because. And it's not over till the fat lady sings as Sequoia came back in the first game. They end up losing by two, but they were down 23 just about in the first game uh, to Green Forest Christian, and they went on a 25-5 run to go on a four-point lead. And uh, speaking of... Kendall Crude knocked the first one down, makes a second. It's now 44 to 19. As they open the half with a little bit of a two point run, if you want to call it a run, if anything. Jumper is no good. Rebound, though, is, uh, well, North Cobb Christian got it. Pass ahead to Stefan Jelks, who stuffs it. Mr. Duncan Stuff style. Slam a jam on, brings it home. More importantly is the court awareness. I believe that was passed up by Keyshawn Butts, who had that one. Uh, I saw that Stefan Jelks had leaked out. So great transition play there by North Cobb Christian. Two against one. And now 46 to 19. We got a foul on the play is number 15, Stefan Jelks. That's his second first team foul of the half. There are only two team fouls in the whole entire first half for North Cobb Christian. And now that forces Collins Hill to inbounds it from underneath. And it'll be uh, Devin Mitchell as he's back in action. Passes it to Pierre Richardson. Pierre Richardson, three-pointer, no good. Rebound, Jeremy James over Trey Kalina, the seven-footer. But uh, Pierre Richardson will lose it. The last touch by, I guess it will be, last touch by North Cobb Christian. So Collins Hill gets it back. Matt Bradley almost lost that one. One-hand pass to Devin Mitchell on the wing. Working it with his brother. He's going to bring it out instead, instead of utilizing a screen that his brother could have given him. Screen there by Pierre Richardson. Pierre dives a little bit. Nope. Devin Mitchell decides to take it himself. Three-pointer is no good. Last touch by Collins Hill. So now it'll be North Cobb Christian's ball with 5.34 to go in the third quarter. 46-19. to 19. Unaware bringing the ball up for North Cobb Christian. Over to Stefan Jelks. Up to Trey Kalina. Oh, I thought he was going to shoot that. Kendall Krupp nails it. Resser saying he was on the line, so that's only a two-pointer. 48-19. to 19. Pass ahead. Jalen Mitchell gets to the open three shot. Look, no good. Rebound by Keyshawn. Butts over to Kendall Krupp. Ooh, almost a dangerous pass. Tried to be fancy and have a little bit of a shimmy shake no look, but... Kendall Crute steps outside as Stefan Jelks has come around the corner from the low post. Rebound is Keyshawn Butts. 
Good job by that young man to stick it in there and get the rebound. Trey Kalina at times was pretty good in the first quarter, but then in the second quarter he went back to his old ways and got a little lazy at times, got rebounded. Three-pointer good by guess who? Kendall Crute, the future Ohio University Bobcat, not to be confused with Ohio State Buckeye. Devin Mitchell thought about it. So did Jalen Mitchell, the younger brother. Off to Matt Bradley. Bradley he nails that one. So now it's 51-22 with 3.56 to go. Uh, Kendall Crute has a wide-open shot almost. Matt Bradley said, I need help. But then Kendall Crute stepped down, so he was forced to guard him. As Collins Hill is in a man-to-man -man zone at the moment. Stefan Jelks out uh, swinging around, and Kendall Crute hits another three-pointer. As the Collins Hills coaches look on in disbelief of what Kendall Crute can really do. Got a foul on number 15, Stefan Jelks. That's his third. Might force him to come out now. So he doesn't get a quick foul. We got Jonathan Twine and a couple others sitting there on the bench. Can't see. Uh, my view is blocked. Okay, so Jonathan Twine is coming in definitely for Stefan Jelks. We have number 12 for Collins Hill, J.D. Ozo, coming in for Devin Mitchell. And we have number, I believe that's 10, Daniel Roach is coming in, but he's coming in for uh, Jalen Mitchell, the shooter. So that will be put on pause. Good pass there to get it out of the way, and you can do that on an inbounds play as you can throw it into the backcourt, just as long as you don't go back over. Pierre Richardson working on the outside, a little bit of dribble moves, no good. Uh, Jonathan Twine gets it, passes it up to Kendall Crude, who decides to go ahead and just launch it anyways. And uh, he's going to hit another three-pointer. Surprise, surprise here, folks, as Kendall Crude is left, taken up where he left off last night with his 27 points. Matt Bradley decides to say, anything you can do, I can do better. He nails that three-pointer, the little 5'10 guard. So it's now 57 to 25. I don't think North Cobb Christian is going to follow the same feat of uh, uh, Green Forest Christian. They've come out pretty strong here. They did not go to sleep at halftime. Trey Kalina, a one-step dribble, shoots, fires, misses, rebound, Keyshawn Butts out to Hunter Ware. Hunter Ware thought about it. He said, maybe I can do what Kendall Crute can do. He decided, no, I'm going to take it myself. Jonathan Twine on the top. Dribble in. Passing it back. Kendall Crute says, why not? Uh, and, uh, Collins Hill coaches are probably thinking, can we just go ahead and call Mercy? Is it 60 to 25 with one minute and 48 seconds as the second half so far is the Kendall Crute show and showing why he's a top rated player in the state of Georgia. Ooh, a little pass back. Kendall Crute says, why not? <laughs> I'm just going to be quiet for a minute and let everybody observe the Kendall Crute show. We're going to Call this no longer. I'm just gonna sit back and watch Kendall Crude. I don't I don't know if he can miss yet. My partner over here, Marcus Burnett, is in tears of how well Kendall Crude can shoot. Why not? Just give it to him. It's one of the greatest movies of all time. Do it. Oh, he missed. He is human after all. As he missed that one. And North Cobb Christian calls timeout, and all their fans are on their feet giving him applause. And a 30-second timeout. If he had hit that last three-pointer, I would have set the mic down and just walked out of this arena.
Well, folks, we're back in action, and in case you weren't counting, uh, Kendall Crude hit five three-pointers so far, and just alone in this quarter to give himself a solid 15 points. For the game, though, he's hit seven three-pointers. And out of that, that's 21 solid points just from that alone. He has more than 21 as he's hit a couple of layups and uh, free throws as well. And it's not over yet as there's still a quarter to go. There's 33 seconds of this one as Kendall Crute's taking it. Why not? Lay it, shoot it from there, Kendall. Launch it. Pass it over to Jonathan Twine. They're just going to wind this down to the last second, uh, but most likely. He's being guarded by Pierre Richardson. Ooh, he almost had a chance. Three or eight, seven, six. Wow. Well, I really have no idea what to say. Uh, it's more like the North Cobb Christian three-point show. As they lead 66 to 25, which will bring on a six-minute quarter. And I know they're probably hoping maybe Kendall Crute will be not playing this quarter as he's hit seven three-pointers for the game. And we'll take this moment to say thanks to Jared Cook for bringing you live the fifth annual Jared Cook Classic. You listen to Will McNeely from the Sports Utility Vehicle bringing to you live broadcasts of sports events. If you want your event broadcasted live over the internet for all 7 billion people in the world to see, go ahead and hit up www.suvehicle.com. Fill out our contact form. Let us know how we can help you and putting your event live over the internet. We'd love to help you out. We also assist in sponsorship development of events and special projects for sports. And we're back in action here at the start of the fourth quarter. And no, you're not reading the clock wrong. It is a six minute quarter as North Cobb Christian leads 66 to 25. And that foul right there is Jonathan Kalina. Kalina. Uh, he went up slower than a sloth and molasses stuck in Connecticut winter. Misses the dunk as he's rejected by number 10, Daniel Roach. But uh, unfortunately for Daniel, he drew a foul, so that sends Jonathan, or, uh, Trey Kalina to the line. So far, the tail of the game has been Kendall Crute and his seven three-pointers. I believe that'll be it for Kendall because he hasn't come, been out yet in the fourth quarter, or now he comes out. And I believe that'll be it for him today. And then for him is number 23. 23, Casey Brown. Stefan Jelks launches one. And he makes it. I think that's either his second or third of the day. So for the day, Kendall's hit seven. Stefan's hit a pair. Hunter Ware's hit at least one, and so has Keyshawn Butts. And I don't think Jonathan Twine's hit one, but multiple players, at least three or four for North Cobb Christian, have hit all hit three-pointers. And an impressive effort. You could argue live by the three, die by the three, but today they are living large from three-point land. And coming in now are some of the bench players as they'll get an opportunity to log some minutes and get some experience, some live game action early in the season, which is definitely... Uh, Essential, especially when you go on a deep run in the tournament action. 
uh, state tournament because you want some players to come off the bench and provide some quality effort to give your star players a chance at a breather and regain their thoughts unless you just have someone like Kendall Crude who can hit seven three-pointers and put it away early as the score is now 69-25 with 4.40 to go. Uh, lip is good by number 10. Number 10, Zach Bollinger. 71-25. I don't think anybody saw this one coming. I know we, we knew that Kendall was going to hit some threes, but seven of them, goodness. Foul on the play. Probably number 23, I'm guessing. Nope, number 10, Zach Bollinger. That's his first, team third. As J.D. Ozo went up for the shot, so he'll get two on this play at the charity strike. Nails the first, 26-71, 4-16 to go. You're not mistaken, this quarter is going to go by quick because they were up by 30 or more. Or is it 40? What's the rule, 30 or 40? It's 30. 40 at half is when it's a running clock, isn't it? Trey, Kalina, nice little jumper, no good. A little face-up action from him. He hit one in the first quarter, and then he also had a nice little spin-around hook move. Landed one, one, two. On that last foul was on Jonathan Twine, his first team fourth. And don't go anywhere after this game because coming up next is. Five-time defending state champion Miller Grove, who has arguably the best backcourt with two wonderful point guards. They were lighting up three-point land the other day as well. Versus Peachtree Ridge, the Lions, who feature Amir Warnock, a Jacksonville University commit. And that game will be brought to you live by Mark Blumen from North Atlanta Game of the Week and John Morgo. And after that one is uh, the home team, North Gwinnett High School versus Hillcrest from South Carolina. And this is the final day of the fifth annual Jared Cook Classic, a three-day event. where all proceeds of ticket sales and raffle tickets go to Cancer Research to honor Jared's mother who has beat out breast cancer. We bring to you the final three minutes of Collins Hill versus North Cobb Christian Eagles versus Eagles, Cobb County Eagles versus Gwinnett County Eagles. But this one has not really been a contest as North Cobb Christian has run away with this, all behind. Kendall Crute, seven three-pointers. More or less a team effort from three-point line as multiple players hit at least one three-pointer. And right now we got some of the backup players on the bench, except for Trey Kalina, who's still out there. He's a starter. Nice take by number three. He misses it and a rebound by number 10. Daniel Roach, and good, uh, great transition awareness as the player missed it, so he went right up with it and got the offensive board. Trey Kleena up with it. Good. Final two and a half minutes to go in this contest. Trey Kleena with the rejection. A foul on number 10, 
I believe that's Zach Bollinger. Yep, Zach Bollinger. The seventh team fouls. That means that Collins Hill has bonus. Right now it's the one and one. So uh, if you make the first, you get in a second. For anybody that did not know, Trey Kalina now coming out. Listed as seven feet tall, but looks about more like 6'10", 6'11". A uh, bit of a scuttle and a couple of them. Wow. A bit of a running jumper, number 22. Santi Butrago. He missed the running floater on that one. and Last touch by Collins Hill, so North Cobb Christian retains possession. Passed around the outside. Looking for an opportunity, probably for a three-pointer, which wouldn't surprise me at all so far. It looks like they're just going to try and hold out as long as they possibly can with the last minute 45 to go. Some good uh, three-point up and oh. uncle. Call uncle. Casey Brown hits it. Nice little spin move up and dipsy do is number 12, J.D. Ozo. A little impressive as he, uh, nice little tight spin move. And up and under while he's in midair. And kisses it off the glass. Jonathan Twine, long two, good. 70, 78, 34 with just a minute to go. Like I said, don't go anywhere. Don't open a new browser. Don't go to the bathroom because coming up next is five-time defending state champion Miller Grove High School who feature arguably the best one-two punch point guards and shooting guards as they were launching threes the other day. And they played Saturday but did not play tomorrow yesterday, so we'll get to see them today. And they'll take on Peace Tree Ridge, the Lions. They feature Amir Warnock while Miller Grove – Features Keith Pinkney and Altariq Gilbert. Arguably the best one-two punch from the outside. Bringing that game is our good friend Mark Blumen, who's getting set up right now. And John Morgo. This is Will McNeely, and I'll be signing off. I might check in every now and then with them, but for the most part, I'll let them take things over. And this is the Sports Utility Vehicle. Remember, if you want your game web broadcasted, any sports events from high school to professional, basketball all the way up to shuffle, we'll broadcast it for you. Go to suvehicle.com, fill out our form. I'm sure if we had a way, Marcus would, Marcus would let us do underwater basket weaving too. I think UGA has that, don't they? Go fill out our form, and we'll uh, we'll talk with you how to bring your sports event live to the seven billion people of the world. As the final seconds of this game will tick off with less than twenty to go, is North Cobb Christian has been very impressive today. Seventy-eight thirty-four is your score at the moment. as it's been the Kendall Crout show for the most part. Well, that foul is on J.D. Ozo. I don't know why you'd foul with 2.8 seconds to go. Just let that clock run out. Might as well just let it get it over with. And that'll do it as North Cobb Christian was dominant 78-34. to 34. Uh... Devin Mitchell, the Alabama commit, was limited in action due to a foot injury. He tried to come back, but I don't think he was able to do so as he sat right back out uh, at the start of the second half. This is Will McNeely, and I'm signing off for now as I'll be joined soon by Mark 
Blumen and John Morgo. We'll take a quick break as we set up the next broadcast. 